Good morning, Greg Garcia, back here at Golden Fly Shop. I'm gonna tie another fly. A fly today I'm gonna to tie is called a shaky Beely. It's a great pattern. I don't know if you haven't heard of it, I would definitely go wrap some up. It's a really good pattern. It's a pattern that I use primarily on the swing. As any of you who know me probably have gathered by now that the last several years I've practically 90% of my fishing has been swung flies, either on a two-handed trout spay rod or even a single hand rod that I have set up to throw a light scanty line on, or even a Skagit head as well. But this fly can be fished on either swung. I've also had occasions where I haven't been able to catch a fish on a swung fly on a particular river. And in frustration, I had just picked this, the rod up did some casts, overhand casts, and actually fished this fly just behind a dry fly. So lots of ways to fish it. Primarily it was designed as a fly to fish um, for some, some big caddis, uh, you could tie it even bigger, maybe a small little attractor streamer pattern, but um, let's give it a whirl. The, the hook I'm gonna tie it on is a TMCO 2312 or something that has a straight eye on it. You could also use a 200R. There's uh, lots of different options out there. Thread today, I'm gonna go back to Dansville 6 aught in wine, but you could certainly use a red thread, a brown thread, orange, really whatever you like, but uh, I tend to like this Dansville thread quite a bit. All right, so I am gonna start my thread right behind the eye. And we're gonna get some root beer colored crystal flash. If you don't have root beer, you could use an amber. And I'm gonna grab four pieces here. You wanna even up the tips where you cut it off. I'm gonna stick this up over the eye. And just give yourself enough space here that, uh, cause we're gonna use this, I call it legs, but you can uh, wrap it back into this collar of this fly. And what I did there is I just kind of pull this up just to make sure it's right on top of my hook point or my hook shank. And then I'm gonna go back to where I'm just above the barb of the hook. Maybe slightly behind it, right there. Then I'm gonna cut this flash off about one width of the gap of the hook. The next piece of the tail I would probably suggest if you can um, get some dyed mallard, dyed in uh, wood duck. This is actually a piece of real lemon wood duck. Originally that's what this was tied with, so I'm gonna just kind of stick to that. Designated a little slip here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this slip I'm at a right angle here. And you can see where I've tied a few others and there's those little step downs. If I pulled this straight off the stem, like you would pheasant tail or something like that, it makes the tips really uneven. So, but if you cut it straight, 
off the stem like that at that little right angle, these tips will be all even. Uh, length is about twice the length as my flash. I'm gonna just set that in at a, about a 45 de degree angle. I'm gonna do a nice little soft wrap. My second wrap over the top, I increase my tension. It's just gonna roll right on top of the hook. Then I'm gonna come, once you're happy with the length there, you don't need to readjust it. I'm gonna come forward, tying down the rest of that slip. And I'm gonna cut this off right at about, if we divided this hook up into, into half, I'm gonna come up forward about, let's say 70%. For the rib, you can use a lot of things. You can use wire, you can use a thicker brown thread. I like using, again, going back to how this was originally tied, Purcell silk, not around anymore. However, there are some other French variations of, uh, this, this silk thread that you can find. I'm going to tie that in right at that 70% point again. And what I like to do is I like to tie my wires, my ribbing on the bottom of the hook. So I'm just going to hold that on the far side of the hook, pull it down, tie it in, come forward, just halfway up, give us a little room so that we can start doing a little bit dubbing of this body. The dubbing or the body of this fly is super fine in amber, but if you didn't have the amber, I've also tied this fly in all orange, I've used beaver dubbing in a yellow. Anything that might have a little cast of amber. You could even use uh, Pale Morning Dun if uh, that's all you had. A Little bit of dubbing wax on the tip of my finger. I'm gonna catch the tip here. I'm gonna pull that off. Stroke those fibers down, create a little dubbing noodle. It's a little thin somewhere, you can come back in. But you're gonna need probably a five inch dubbing noodle here. Now you notice I have some bare thread. I'm gonna use that bare thread to get me back down to the tail. And then I'm just gonna start forming my body. You can do some little um, overlap at just a pinch. Definitely touch these wraps. Come forward. Gets a little flat on you or not the right diameter. Not a problem, because we can add more dubbing on there. To make whatever taper you want. Or result. So this looks a little thin to me. So I want to come back. Maybe a third way down on that body. Come back up, then I can come back down. Put a little bit more dubbing on just to finish this out. Should be good with that. Using this wine colored thread, you gotta be careful that you get enough dubbing on the thread so that when you make your wraps here, 
the color doesn't show through. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this thread. It's tied on the bottom of the hook. And I'm going to rip this again, wrapping in my direction. When you do that, this ribbing stands out a little bit better than if I wrapped it over the hook or in the direction that I wrap my thread. Because if everything's wrapped in the same direction, my dubbing and then my ribbing, the ribbing will find a little crease and dump in there and kind of get lost. All right, two more materials. The next material is some ostrich hurl. And I've just plucked this off of the stem. Got a big plume here. I like going for these big, nice, big plumes if you can find them. And as you can see, I'm just gonna cut that or pull that right off. And this hurl, if you look at it very closely, it's got a little kind of a V shape to it. So let's say the stem is right where my fingernails are coming together. I'm gonna to tie this in down like that, not up. Because when we tie this in, we want this stem right on top of the hook. That way, this hurl will stand straight up. So I'm gonna come back here, cut some of this uh, thicker pieces out. You don't need to do this, but you can pluck some of the hurl off the stem and that'll really kind of, you'll really be able to see that. Tie that in, let's tighten up my thread a little bit. Tighten in nice and tight. I'm gonna bring my thread straight up to the front, about one eye width back. And then when I start to wrap this ostrich, you'll see how this is standing up nice and tall there. So that was about 11 wraps and that's about right. Um, you can see now that this, all this hurl is standing up almost like chenille. Um, I can probably maybe, let's do one more wrap just for grins. Tie that off. I like tying it off on the bottom of the hook. Sometimes uh, it just comes out a little bit cleaner. Now, my flash, the crystal flash, it's tied up right up against the eye, as you can see. I, that was the very first move I did. Now I'm gonna pull, I've separated these two pieces or bundle. So I have two coming backwards and just like you're gonna form legs on a, on a nymph, just pull those back trap it down, make sure it's tight. And there's my flash through the thorax. Tie that or cut it off where it's just a little bit longer than the width of our thorax there or the length. Then we'll grab some partridge. You could also use some grouse on this. Uh, grouse would be a nice substitute if you can find some grouse. 
Ruffled grouse is great. Sharp tail grouse. Gonna get that fluff out of there. Go into the tip. Got a little tie-in piece here, a little wedge. Again, make sure your thread is tight. So I'm spinning it clockwise. A little wax for grip never hurts. I'm gonna tie this in with about three, four wraps. There's two, three, four, going up to the very front of the eye. Grab our hackle pliers. Grab that stem. Fold our partridge up and back. Then we're gonna get about two to three wraps in. Again, we wanna be conscious of the curvature of this stem. Try not to uh, twist the stem. Try not to capture any of these feathers or barbs. If you don't like the way it looks, just stop. There we go. Run your thread through your tie-in point there. Again, I'm gonna cut this feather off right at the bottom of the hook. As you can see, as we get down towards where our cut off, this stem gets pretty thick and wide very quickly. It's kind of a woody stem too, it's pretty hollow. Um, another little trick too, if you have a big chunk down there, you can kind of flatten it with your fingernail or burnish it down um, so it doesn't protrude out as much. But I'm happy with that. So I'm going to start my whip finish, it's right at the front of the hackle, and I'm gonna go down three, four wraps, right down to the eye, plop it off my tool, tighten that up. And then the last thing you can do if you'd like, get your favorite head cement, Go around. I really like this hard as hole penetrator. Um, it dries to a really glossy finish. If you put two, three coats on, it gets really glossy. Um, I know you can use some of the UV resins but uh, yeah, try this hardest hull penetrator. They also will provide a thinner for it. So as this gets a little gooey and thick to your lightning, you can just uh, thin it up. But uh, that's it. There's your shaky beely. One of my favorite flies. I usually fish it in a size 12, 14. 16 gets a little small, but you can certainly tie them down smaller, but kind of the uh, uh, sizes I like the best is uh, 14 to a 12. Give it a try, swing it, uh, tie it on behind the dry as a dropper, and I think you'll have some great results during the next caddis hatch you encounter.
Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, have a great day.